Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Um, I'm sure that all of the Dak Prescott haters out there are loving what they're hearing about Trey Lance right now. We hear that Trey Lance is in the best shape of his life, that mentally, physically, and maturity-wise, he is in the best shape of his life and ready to challenge. In fact, here's where exactly in his own words um, says he's in, well, he is at his best mentally, physically and spiritually ahead of his opportunity to win the backup job and uh, back backup win the backup job wait a minute backup job I thought that we were looking at Trey Lance to win the starting job. By the way, the hype has been rolling. Oh, so it's Trey Lance versus Cooper Rush? Oh, okay. Well, Dak Prescott feeling the pressure of Trey Lance trying to win the backup role. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Trey Lance has gotten so much better in his time with the Cowboys. I'm excited for where he is now. He works his ass off. He's pushing me. If somebody, I'm somebody that doesn't like to let other people get more reps than me. And the Trey Lance is the person I need to watch. So Dak is definitely, um, forgive me, I'm sorry, I don't mean to, you know, do all that stuff in here, but it's just like, I'd rather do that than have it run down my nose. Um, yeah, Dak Prescott saying all the right things about Trey Lance, that he's putting in the work and everything else, and that he's pushing him. Um, this is a testament to how much he's pulling into the, how much he's putting into this. I've seen it, he's gotten better, he can play. Um. Dak on not being threatened by Trey uh, could be how it relates to Dak and his contract situation. As long as he is getting better, I promise I'm getting better. I encourage it. I hope he pushes me, and I hope that he makes people think, I know where I'll be, and I know who I am. I'm confident in the person and the player that I am, that I am and I hope he does. I hope he pushes me. So Dak is looking at the challenge. Um, of this as opposed to um, you think about Carson Wentz or Aaron Rodgers who when they drafted another guy you know you had Carson Wentz who literally uh, stopped talking to his coach for six months you know in the season and things and pouted Aaron Rodgers to this day talks about the quarterback that they drafted and still won't say Jordan Love's name um, I for one love the idea of competition and that people are having to be pushed. Now, do I think that Trey Lance is ready to take over for Dak Prescott? No, but you always want to, and, and who knows, you know, football, we all know football is a crazy sport where any play could be your last play. Nobody thought that Dak Prescott would ever start a game for the Dallas Cowboys in 2016. He was four string going into training camp. Jamil Showers, a guy who they converted to a cornerback before he actually got cut, was ahead of him. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah. But De Dak Prescott stepped into the breach, played his ass off, and ended up taking the role. Now, that's not to say that Trey Lance can't end up being that guy. I think about a Steve Young, who was at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, looking like ass-ass. And if you're so bad that Tampa Bay doesn't want you back in those days, the creamsicle day, bro, you can't play. But he got an opportunity playing behind Joe Montana and ended up becoming a Hall of Famer. Now, I don't know if that's going to be Trey Lance, but... 
in this day and age, thank God that we had Cooper Rush a couple of years ago when Dak Prescott broke his thumb because he was four and one and helping us to go on to a 12 and five season and make the playoffs. He saved our season. So having a great backup is a luxury in the NFL and one that we shouldn't take lightly. And um, we'll see how he plays in preseason. Um, He's definitely getting plenty of work right now. The Cowboys, if nothing else, are trying to hype him up because it could be there's a team out there that loses a starting quarterback and gets desperate and needs a quarterback. It's not the first time something like that's happened, and nor will it be the last. So that's where we are with that situation. Um, So many people, so many people have um, left the Cowboys for roadkill and have literally given up on the season. I'm not giving up on the season. I, I don't know that we're a Super Bowl team. I'm not going to try and go there and lie to you and, and say that. But the crazy thing about football is going into last season, I don't think too many people thought that the Green Bay Packers were going to be very good. I know a lot of people thought that Daniel Jones was about ready to have a breakout year. Um, with the Giants that were fresh on to winning a playoff game and um, ended up going in the toilet. So things change quickly in the NFL, and you never know where they're going to be. When I sit here and I look at the team, honestly, realistically, I can't say that the team is going to be worse. And I challenge somebody to look around and tell me where the Cowboys have gotten markedly worse. Their quarterback was on an MVP tear, was healthy all is healthy all off season. You have one of the best wide receivers returning. You've lost Tony Pollard, but worst case scenario, you might have lost a couple hundred yards between him and Zeke. Tony Pollard didn't exactly have a great season. You have a budding star at tight end that had kind of a breakout year last year. You've got the second year of the Texas Coast. Um, offense where they should be better. Yes, you lost Tyron Smith, but we've lost Tyron Smith quite a few times over the last few years. And you've reloaded. You've reloaded on your offensive line. So I don't see this where you're hearing from all the talking heads that the Cowboys are in terrible shape, that they're a bad team. Well, they've been a good team for three years. And they didn't lose as much as we think they did. On the defense, you got to look at this and say, the heart of the defense is the linebacking core. We're better right now, on paper at least, than we were last year without Leighton Van Der Esch. We'll at least have linebackers playing linebackers. And I can't say that we honestly are that much worse on the defensive line um, than we were. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right, good people. I hope you all are having a good evening. Um, I'm going to go back 